Okay, you have been uh, talking about a lot about that why history is fake and why Indian history needs to be rewritten. Now it's coming especially from a French person. Uh, why do you think Indian history is fake? A uh, little bit of background, actually. My eyes were open when I was covering Kashmir as a journalist, as a young journalist, a French, a Catholic educator, uh, coming to India with the same ignorance and prejudices and most Western journalists have and still have today, unfortunately. Uh, when I covered Kashmir and I was, a, I was a witness to the ethnic cleansing of the Hindus of Kashmir, I was there when the first leaders were started being killed by then the KLF, the Kashmir Liberation Front. Uh, and I was there when they fled, the, the Hindus of Kashmir, what is called the Kashmir Pandits, fled without firing a single shot and became refugees in their own country, something which I don't think has happened in the 20th and 21st century ever. Um, it opened my eyes and I, I started studying Indian history. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a historian, I'm not a, even a journalist, I became a journalist by accident, that's another story, we'll do it another day. But Kashmir opened my eyes, so I started looking at Indian history. And the first person I looked at, of course, is Aurangzeb, because Aurangzeb is very central to the entire Indian history, and today is a person of controversy, is either praised to heaven or is hated. So I started looking at Aurangzeb, and I realized that, uh, of course, Aurangzeb is mostly praised in Western and Indian history, because it actually was a monster. You know? according to his own records, because if you care to look at Indian history, there are a lot of records in India. Uh, for instance, Aurangzeb kept firmans, you know, every time he was a very meticulous emperor, very, you know, ruthless, but also very meticulous, and he lived very long. He lived till the age of 80, which for this time was a very advanced age. So very meticulous. Every time he passed an order, whether it was the raising of the Somnath Temple, or for forbidding Hindu from riding, from riding horses, elephants, palanquins, or, you know, killing Hindus, uh, he passed an order. It was written in Farsi, uh, sealed with the Empress seal, and it's kept today. It's available. Uh, by, I, my, I, I had a professor of Indian history for my first exhibition on Aurangzeb, uh, which I opened in the Delhi Habitat Center, and Professor Batnaga told me at that time that, you know, most of the orders of Aurangzeb are kept in the Bikaner archives in Rajasthan. So, we got access to the Bikaner archives through, so at that time, that lady was Chief Minister uh, Sindhya, the... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. She, uh, yeah, right. And she knew me, she had read some of my books, so she gave us access to the uh, Bikaner archives, and, and we scanned some of the orders of Aurangzeb, and according to these orders, which my professor translated into Hindi and English, uh, we did mm. paintings. We had a team of uh, miniature painters in Jaipur, and we just did paintings reproducing what the fair man said. And of course, we opened this exhibition in uh, in uh, in uh, Habitat Center in Delhi. There was a little bit of controversy there. Habitat Center were not so happy. Mr. Advani came. Uh, Shushi Ravishanka uh, opened the exhibition with Mr. Advani. Uh, Dr. Karan Singh came. So uh, they were not very happy in the uh, Habitat Center once they realized the content of the exhibition. And some people said, why do you want to recap the past? Why do you want to create communal disharmony? Leave the past be. But I felt, you know, from that time, because there's not only Aurangzeb, there's everything. Alexander the Great. Uh, no, but the, coming, coming to uh, Aurangzeb, on Aurangzeb, uh, Okay, you call you think he's a monster, right? He was a monster, right? A uh, lot of people believe, so. according to records, right? Yeah, yeah. Same here, same here. He othered Hindus. He discriminated. He issued uh, commandments: what they can do and what they can't do. But at the same time, there is a lot of literature, history books, uh, especially the uh, the new book by Audrey Trush uh, at Rutgers University. She's a professor at Rutgers. She has written a book uh, called. Aurangzeb, the man and the myth, in which she is trying to say that uh, uh, whatever we think that he's a monster is a myth. Actually, he was a great guy. What are your views on Audrey Trush? How would you counter her? 
But she's a horrible lady. She's a horrible lady. I mean, and she's not a proper historian because she should study around their records. It's easy. There are two. There are two museums. One, the Bikaner Archive, and two in Hyderabad. There's a museum entirely devoted to around the film, and they're kept there. You no, know, my guys went there. I couldn't go there because they would recognize me. So I sent my guys, and they said, "Oh, we want to study around there. You know, we're in awe of him." So. We scan about hundred thousand, you know, firmans or in them, and we have them in our archives in Delhi. So he was a monster, according to his own record. So Mrs. Trutsky doesn't study him. No, she's just that Hindu phobia is translated into admiration of Aurangzeb, because not only was a monster to Hindus, he was a monster to his own family. You know, he poisoned his own father. Uh, Shah Jahan, uh, he beheaded his brother Darashuko, who was one of the better Sufi. We have an exhibition on Darashuko in the uh, Shivaji Maharaj Museum of Pune. You know, he Darashuko is one of the only guys in Islam who believed that Islam had an origin in the Upanishad. So he translated the Upanishad, you know, uh, into Farsi. Uh, and he, he was really a, a true Sufi. I don't think there are many true Sufis. Uh, Sufism is a big hoax, but he was a genuine Sufi. He wrote many. So uh, Aurangzeb beheaded his own brother, uh, Dara Shuko. Uh, he imprisoned his son. Aurangzeb wrote a will, you know. As I said, he was a very meticulous guy. By his own hand, he wrote a will himself. We have a painting in the museum that shows him writing his own will by hand. In this will, he said two important things. One, he said, never trust your sons. Never trust your sons. And the second thing he said is, my biggest mistake was letting Shivaji Maharaj escape from my ground. Now, mm. the guy who says, you know, the father who says, never trust your son, you can imagine what kind of a man he is. What kind of a man he is? I mean, he wrote it with his own hands. And never let, you know, the b biggest mistake of Shivaji Maharaj, this is another side of Indian history, not only monsters are propped up.